Welcome to the first, and possibly the only, Rising Up Supplemental. This guide will walk you through setting up whatever sticker pad you have for use on the PC version of SF5. If you're impatient, or you'd rather follow written directions than spoken ones, I've written out what you need to do in the description. And if you just want to see the ideal button mapping, then check the first two links in the description. For the record, I do not think it terribly matters anymore what kind of controller you use, as long as you can execute every tool your character has consistently. That being said, I highly encourage you to invest in an arcade stick, or at least don't use a keyboard. I've only played one remotely good player in my life who was using a keyboard, and you'll look like a fool if you try and go to a tournament or run casuals using the Sidewinder X4 you brought from home. As I said in Rising Up Part 1, the PC version of SF5 currently only supports controllers that use X input. Xbox 360 and Xbox One controllers natively use X input, and I'm pretty sure the Xbox versions of arcade sticks and Mad Cat's fight pads will also natively work. However, if you have a PS3 or PS4 stick, pad, or any kind of PC USB controller, there's a good chance it uses direct input instead. This tutorial will walk you through a few ways to get your computer to recognize whatever controller you plug in as an X input controller. Before you do anything, plug in all controllers you want to use and make sure the computer itself is detecting inputs. Doing this will be a little different based on your operating system, but you want to open up your devices and find the controller you just plugged in. I can see my Mad Cat's fight pad and X USB gamepad. Now, right click a controller and go to Game Controller Settings, then Properties. You should be able to spin the sticker pad and push some buttons to see feedback on the Properties page. If you don't, then your computer isn't recognizing inputs from the controller, and you have either a broken controller, or you're missing a driver that you need to download from the controller's manufacturer. Note that some PS3 sticks and pads must be plugged into USB 2.0 ports and will not detect inputs without a program like Motion Enjoy DS3 tool. I don't know how to set that up, but there are many existing guides, so just go check those out. I think it has a feature that gives PS3 pads X input anyway, so you might just be able to use that and skip this video. Take a good look at this schematic. Pause if you have to. This is the button layout most Street Fighter players use. Some players don't like the curvature of the buttons and instead use this layout. Again, pause if you have to. Pick your preference between these and get a good idea of what buttons should correspond to which attacks. Finally, most pad players seem to use this layout. Now, I'm going to hit the button I want to correspond with my light punch. I can see that button 3 is lighting up. It would be a good idea now to open a notepad file and make a little list of what you want all your inputs to be. It would also be a good idea to take note of whether your desired sticker pad is detecting as the X and Y axis or the point of view hat. Now, there's a program on the internet I've linked in the description called X360CE. You need to download either the 32 or the 64-bit version, depending on your operating system. If you don't know which one you are, you're probably 32. Now go into your SF5 folder. The default directory is C, Program Files, Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Street Fighter V. Open up the Street Fighter V folder inside that one, then open Binaries. If there's nothing in there, make a folder called Win32 or Win64, depending on which version of X360CE you got. Then donk the EXE for X360CE inside that folder. Open X360. It should automatically recognize your controllers and offer to download default settings from the internet. I've never had it fail, so if it fails, you're on your own. There, now it recognizes the XUSB controller I plugged in. The settings it found actually exactly match the ideal schematic I showed you earlier, so I don't actually need to do anything here. If it didn't match, say if I wanted my light punch to be button 4, then I'd go to that schematic, see the X button should be light punch, then I'd go to X360, click the X button setting, and click it to button 4. So on and so forth with every button. It should look exactly like this on the picture when you do LP, MP, HP, LK, MK, HK. Mine is already recognized as controller 1. Say it recognized as controller 4 for some reason. Go to whatever tab is showing inputs when you push on them, then go to the second row's far right tab that should be the name of your controller. There's a drop down menu on the right side that says Map 2, just set it to 1, or 2 for the second player. You have to make sure the two controllers you want to use are mapped to controller 1 and controller 2 respectively. Note you have to reopen X360CE if you want to change this later on. Now you just hit save and close the program, then open SF5. You do not need to keep this program open while you play. It should just be a one-time permanent thing. You might, however, need to reopen it when introducing a new controller or changing the player ports. Just resave it when you're done. Now, I heavily recommend using X360 because you don't have to keep it open, it has less input lag than the next version, and it supports multiple players. 
However, it seems not everyone can get it working for whatever reason, so here's an alternative. I put a link to Joytiki in the description. Download it, unzip it anywhere, then open up the exe. You want to create a profile, then map your buttons to correspond with the default keyboard controls of SF5. I put those default controls in the description. Light punch is G, medium punch is H, hard punch is J, light kick is B, medium kick is N, and hard kick is M. The pause menu is enter, and directions can be done as either the arrow keys or the WASD keys. Just make them correspond to the buttons you mapped from earlier. If you're having trouble finding an axis, go to Options and set Stick POV to show all axes. Then just hit the direction or button. It should light up for you. You need to open Joy to Key and set it to the right profile every time you want to play. Also, closing Joy to Key with the X at the top just minimizes it. So when you're done playing, you need to go to File, then Exit. These are some methods I've found to play. If you have any sort of troubleshooting problems, leave them as questions in the comments and I'll try and help. And if you have a problem and found the solution, for God's sake, leave that as a comment too.